The glory that was heaped upon Giuseppe after the triumph of Otello was something unprecedented. Of course, everyone expected him to enjoy this achievement and die a happy man. But the best was yet to come. In his 80th year, Verdi surprised everyone and produced his 28th opera, Falstaff. Verdi had devoted his entire life to opera. By the time he wrote Falstaff, he was a complete master of his craft, and he used all his technique and genius to produce a comedy, a brilliant one. <laughs> By the time you get to Falstaff, this octogenarian composer who's absolutely his own man, his own artist, is, is smashing all the forms of Italian opera. There are no arias, there are monologues, but nothing has an aria structure. It's a miracle uh, for a composer to, to come to this plane now, to embrace comedy. Look at the advice Falstaff gives to his two cohorts, Bardolf and Pistol. If you're going to rob, you have to do it properly. L'arte sta in questa massima. L'arte sta in questa massima. He says, rob with grace and with good rhythm. Your rubbish artists. Falstaff sums up his philosophy of life at the very end of the opera, saying that the whole world is a jest, that we are all born jesters, and we are there to taunt and mock, but it's the one who has the last laugh who wins. And Verdi sets this philosophical credo, if you like, to music in the most incredible fugue. Now, fugue is um, a piece of music which starts with a theme. And then another voice or another instrumental voice will sing that same theme at a different pitch while the other voice is continuing on. <laughs> And the word burlone, which is very hard to say, brr, burlone. Um, we're all born jesters, but this adds to the life of the sound. <laughs> Everybody has their voice until it builds up to an incredible pitch, um, fever pitch, in fact. He says, Tutti Gabati. It's, we're all mocked. And they have to respond, the rest of them. Of course, his beloved orchestra gets the very last laugh.
After Falstaff, Verdi lived on for eight years, but there were no more operas. This is where Verdi died. Quite incredible to be in the same room, actually. You know, the story goes that um, as he was dying, they put straw out on the pavement, on the streets, so that the carriages, the noise of the carriages would, would be diminished so as not to disturb him in his last hours. In February 1901, a month after Verdi's death, 300,000 people thronged the streets of Milan to watch the procession taking his body to its final resting place. A huge chorus sang. Naturally, they sang his great hymn to freedom, Va Pensiero, from Nabucco. By the end of his life, Verdi had come to symbolize Italy itself. The operatic succession would now pass to a very different genius, Giacomo Puccini. Opera continues with a taste of the food of Italian opera here on BBC4 tomorrow at 9 with Rick Stein. And then on Wednesday, we ask what makes a great tenor, also at 9. There's a little taster of that coming up in just a second. Next tonight, stay with us for brand new Storyville.